Good morning, my fellow Hooning Scallywags. Uh, I thought I'd do some notes on the brand new WRX S4 STI. This is a Japanese spec model, you can't get them in Europe or America yet. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the difference is between this and the American GT spec, which I think is the highest spec you can get in America, or the Limited, one of the two. I think the GT is the highest. But this has the the five modes: comfort, normal, sport, sport plus, which I think kind of equates to the American Sport Sharp. And then there's a custom mode where you can individually set the parameters, and it has a quick access switch on the steering wheel, which is cool. Anyway, onto the notes. So when I got this, I picked it up from the Subaru dealer. Uh, drove it away and the first thing I noticed was that the steering wheel was cockeyed to the left it was off center when driving in a straight line so if you held the steering wheel centrally perfectly central the car would drive slowly to the right so that was uh, straight away like I don't like that that sucks it's not normal it's not correct I later found out that the a couple of days later that the rear light cluster was loose so you'd get a gap here and it would rattle you could actually move it and make it rattle they fixed it so that it's just a nice firm push now the weird thing is there's actually a bigger gap on the right than there is on the left why that would be so I don't fucking know but the weird thing was that the loaner they gave me was equivalent to the to the American Oh, I don't know the premium it had th it has three modes uh, normal sport and sport sharp I didn't like it it sucked it didn't have adaptive damping but anyway those were the two things that I spotted on this one and the loaner they gave me had exactly the same two issues it had 7,000 kilometers on it and the steering wheel was slightly cocked to the left and the rear right light cluster was even worse. There was a gap of about a centimetre. I fixed, yeah, there, there was a gap of about a centimetre there. I fixed it by pushing it in firmly and it kind of didn't exactly click, but there was a feeling of resistance. But then it was pushed pulley in and it had the same gap on both sides and both sides felt firmly mounted. So it's coincidence or are there a whole batch of cars released by Subaru WRXs that have some kind of fitment issue with the rear right light cluster and the wheel alignment being out of whack because that's what it turned out to be i need to get this so that the screen's up and i can actually see what i'm pointing at so i took it in for the uh, warranty to sort out the off center wheel so that top pair there that's what they got when they put it on their alignment machine straight off the bat the rears were fine, but the two front wheels were that much out of whack. So after they fiddled and farted with it, it ended up being all in the green, front and back. I wouldn't say it's perfect right now. It's very, 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 very slightly off to the left, but it's good enough. I don't want to be one of those guys that's in and out of their showroom going, now oh, I found something else that's irritating me. Oh, I've got a delivery. So yeah, where was I? Yeah, don't want to be one of those guys that's picky and tiny things. I mean, it should be right, shouldn't it? It's not a cheap car. It's certainly cheaper than you have to, what you pay in America or, or England for one. But with all the bits on it, it wasn't cheap. But yeah, the, uh, the steering's good enough. Uh, the other thing that I immediately found, which may be helpful to some people, is your music player. I like to have my music on a USB stick. It's easy to, you know, sort new songs, you just load them onto it. But my USB stick that had worked perfectly in the CRVT Honda and all other devices did not work in this Subaru. And I did the obvious thing, which immediately was to check the file format, being an ex-computer engineer. So older devices would be formatted in FAT32 and then later on it became FAT64 and then it changed to NTFS 
all latest Windows do, NTFS, and anything that's got the old FAT format on it now shows up on a modern computer as X FAT FAT. So I put a stick in this that did work and then checked its file format, which is NTFS, put the stick that didn't work in the computer and checked the file format, and it came up with X FAT. So I reformatted it into NTFS and it now works perfectly in the car. So for anyone that's having USB music stick problems, make sure your stick's formatted in NTFS, otherwise it won't work. Subaru's picky. Uh, anything else? Oh, yeah, for any other Japanese owners, Gaijin, I suppose, because no Japanese person's going to understand this video, because the modern generation of Japanese don't learn English anymore. 27 years ago, Tokyo and Kyoto, it was rare to come across a Japanese person who didn't speak at least some rudimentary English. Most of them, you could have a conversation with them. Now, forget it. It's exceptionally rare to meet anyone who can have a conversation in English. And my Japanese is, is rudimentary. Uh, I've got a little translator. But yeah, this video won't be for any Japanese people. But for any other gaijin in Japan who are thinking of getting one of these and modding it, I put an ETS Extreme Catback exhaust on this. And I thought, yeah, maybe I'll get pulled by the police for it being a bit noisy. It's not offensive. If you like give it some gas you can make it sound really nice but if you want to burble around inconspicuously in the city or wherever town it would, a copper wouldn't even notice it I don't think he'd know something's been done but he wouldn't be getting arsy about it but it went in for the warranty work on the light cluster and the off center steering wheel and they rang up and said you've got a illegal exhaust on you've removed the mufflers We'll do the job now that we're doing, and you'll have to sign a document to sign off to cover our asses, but it's illegal for them to work on a car that's had its mufflers removed. And there's other mods that will make it illegal for them to work on a car. If you put slightly fatter wheels on and they poke out from the wheel wells, that makes the car illegal. So they took photographs of it up on the lift and said, yeah, look, you're exhausted, it's completely illegal. We can't, in the future, we, we're not allowed to service it and we won't be allowed to do any warranty work on it. Any recalls they do have to do by law, even if you've modified it. So heads up for any guardian that are thinking of getting one of these in Japan. If you put an imported exhaust on it, anything that isn't legal, Japanese legal, with approved stamps, which all dealers check, they have to check by law, they won't touch your car with a barge pole. The only solution uh, to get round it is every time I take this car in for a service, I'm going to have to remove the e ETS exhaust and put the OEM, OEM one back on. It's not the end of the world, but what a fucking faff just to get your car serviced. It's due its first service. It's 1,000 kilometre service. It's about 200, and, about 200 kilometres left on it. So in about a week, I'm going to have to raise it up on its ramp that I made for it and swap the exhaust back and then bring it home after it's been serviced and put the ETS one back on. I just hope the gasket's going to be able to take multiple reuses. But yeah, there's another note just so you know. Uh, don't bother getting a Japanese approved one because they come with mufflers and there's no difference to the sound. This thing sounds like a sewing machine with the stock exhaust. I mean, it doesn't affect the way it drives, it just sounds like crap. You have to have a nice exhaust on a vehicle, motorbike, car, whatever. You want to hear it, you want to think you're driving around in a sewing machine. But it is what it is, that's what I've got to contend with. I'm not doing performance mods on this because it's got a CVT transmission, which doesn't like any kind of extra power. I think some people already did it and had theirs fail. I think the limit, they say, is... Uh, 300 torque at the wheel this thing's about 240 torque at the wheel so you can raise it by 60 and that's the same rough figures for horsepower as well and after that the CVT transmission explodes fortunately you don't miss it here in Japan there, there, there is nowhere to drive a car where you need more horsepower this thing is so quick and for Japanese roads you're either in congestion where you just like stop start 
or you're out in the countryside where the roads are mostly very short straights between multiple corners and this is where this car excels is in cornering I've got all the uh, chassis stuff on it the stiffeners and drawbars and what have you and it goes around corners like it's like it's a, on rails like it's a limpet and I've pushed it and it just doesn't deviate I know you can get it to break out eventually but being all wheel drive you can correct it quite well quite easily but yeah for Japanese spirited riding uh, <laughs> driving it's a car you fool uh, this has got more than enough power and the cornering's where it's at on the Japanese country roads, countryside roads. And this thing is absolutely sublime. You hear all these people talking about how automatics aren't as engaging as manuals. Well, if you've got this in full auto mode, it, when you've got it in Sport Plus, and you're using full automatic transmission in Sport Plus, it automatically, it auto blips on the, as it downshifts, or as it fake downshifts, and it sounds awesome if you use the paddle shifters you're getting all the joy and the engagement of a manual without the hard work that's my personal finding and it's this snobbishness that people think because they can drive a stick shift and it mostly comes from america where automatics have been the main type of car for donkey's years and this this notion that being a stick shifter is somehow technically sophisticated or it's a it's a huge accomplishment in the UK, everyone used to drive a stick shift and automatics were rare. And still to this day, you'll, you'll get more manuals in England than you will automatics. Japan has always been very automatic orientated, but not as much as America. But yeah, if anyone tells you that this thing, is, because it's got an auto transmission, can't be as engaging as a manual, in my personal opinion, having driven many, many, many stick shift cars, including performance ones, I find this thing just as engaging without the hard work. And certainly, if you're having to daily drive in any kind of congestion, as anyone who's driven a stick shift will know, God, does it, does it knacker your leg. So, best of both worlds with this, as far as I'm concerned. Your mileage may vary. Anyway, I can't think of anything else. Oh, yeah, there is one other thing. I specifically instructed the dealer not to pre-delivery wash this car because being a cynical bastard that I am, I assume that they don't know much about the cars they sell. And that's been borne out by talking to the guy that we dealt with when I was getting this. There's so many things that he just like shrugged his shoulder, I don't know. You're supposed to be an expert, man. I'm supposed to be able to ask you questions about the car I want to buy. And you're supposed to like have at least some idea. But sure enough, the black one that was the loner, uh, 7,000 kilometers on it, they've washed it and you can see the damage that's been done to the paintwork, all the swirls and the lines that they scored into the top coat. So thank God I told them not to wash this because the paintwork was pristine on it and it still is. I've done, a, I've done the wax, I've done the sealant. Uh, so yeah, just a note, when you get a new, brand new car, don't let the dealers wash it. Even if they're hand washing it, they still fuck it up. They don't seem to ha have any technical understanding of how to not fuck up paintwork on a car. Which is weird, because it's kind of a... It's, it's one of the fundamentals, isn't it? When you're preparing a new car for a customer, it's, don't fuck it up in any way. Don't fuck up the paintwork. They get on it with those, uh, whatever they use, mitts, sponges, but they apply pressure. They swirl it around, and that's it, your paint's fucked try getting that addressed under warranty uh, I think that is it now I don't think there's anything else there's other... I mean those two faults off the bat a light, uh, a light cluster that was rattly and the steering wheel being off centre and it does surprise me that both the WRX's I've had from Subaru the loner and this one both had identical problems so I'm thinking there's a batch and I don't know how big the batch would be or it's just very, very common. But I would suggest that anyone who has their steering wheel slightly off centre, take it in and have it checked on the wheel alignment. If I'd have had to pay for this, it would have been 300,000 yen, uh, 30,000 yen, which is about $300, I think, roughly. But yeah, that's how much the front wheels were out. Uh, a total, the middle uh, 
number, 3.7 millimeter is the total. The left was 1.6 out, the right was 2.1 out. Uh, I think that's alignment, towing, and the top figures were camber. The left one was out 1.2 degrees, the right one was okay on camber. But yeah, that's how it came from the factory. And as you guys know, if you, if you run your car with your wheels out of whack, you're going to scrub the tyres, you're going to scrub the rubber, and you're going to lose a lot of life off your tyre. And it's got hand, handling implications as well. And plus, if you're OCD and you've got that steering wheel and it's off centre, oh boy, trigger, trigger alert. Anyway, I hope that was of some use. I hope it was mildly entertaining at least. And thanks for listening and watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! The Sprutter Bubble lets you get on with your life away from the intrusion of other people and all their fucking issues. Allowing you to escape into a meltdown of snuff, muff and puff.